What does it mean to be a giant? We are connected by the name on our jersey, but at our core, we are bound together by something more. This guy made me look good. We cherish our past and celebrate the present. This game is over! <laughs> we share our love of the game. Pause live, here we go, here we go. And our hearts with the community. How are you today? What's up, buddy? We are more than a city. Come here, dude. Give me a hug, bro. More than a team. We are SF. We are giants. When you have something special like this, you want it to be like you played when you played. This is the biggest day that you can get when you have something like this in your honor. That's the way I want to be remembered right there. I like doing what I do and modeling in clay because there's really no, there's no, you know, you're trying to achieve, you're trying to improve, and but there's no end to it. There's no, you never really get it right. You get it right that day, but then the next day is a whole new challenge again. So that's, I like that. And I, I like that as something as a, as a career long or lifelong pursuit. In the wooded hills of North Carolina, sculptor William Behrens lives and works. It is in this studio that he has created the four statues of Giants Hall of Famers that surround AT&T Park. This year, he is completing his fifth, pitcher Gaylord Perry. As a sculptor, William has a style all his own, incorporating together his knowledge of the art, of anatomy, and of his subject. If I have a style, it's just something that comes naturally from the way I approach what I do. I've figured out over the years what works for me and what's what I like best, what produces the best results. And so I've, I've kind of adapted uh, different techniques and invented tools, inventive ways of doing things that, uh, that work for me. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good to, Good to see you again. And my eye on the outside, the right hand hitter outside. Yeah. Or you play. Yeah. yeah, what was the count? Yeah, it was this. 2-2. Uh, 2-2, uh, two, two. Two, two. yeah. So you just kind of, just trying to just barely hit the outside. Yeah. yeah. Did he swing at it, though? That's the question. He'd miss it if he did. <laughs> <laughs> you got several things you can pick from. The eyes are right on the target. The shoulder and arm is right. You got your legs right, your socks, shoes, gloves in the right position. You can show that to a bunch of young kids breaking in. That that's where your glove should be, and Good. that's where your right arm should be for your right-hander. Good. It was very exciting to come to his, his studio, his home. When I saw the first, got the first take at it, 
says, Will, it looks just like me. <laughs> Living close by has enabled Gaylord to visit William throughout the creation process, and a friendship between the two is formed. This close camaraderie has allowed William to learn many details that he has included in the final piece. The glove that he's wearing, uh, that obviously is a, was a big part of his career, and so that glove had to be right. I don't think I would have known about that if we hadn't just been sitting down talking. A lot of history that special. That. Special glove. Yeah. He threw that glove away. I hopped on that sucker. <laughs> I told him about the glove was very special. The glove is a Willie Mays glove. I saw him make one error, and it was with that glove, he threw it away. I went and got it, and he used it for probably 15 years. Willie. <laughs> hey, Mac. Hey, Gabe. How you doing, buddy? Hey, congratulations. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Watch your shots real quick. Yeah. Super. You guys are great. On the day of the unveiling, all of the Giants Hall of Famers were in attendance and gathered with a large crowd to bear witness to the statuary immortalization of Gaylord Perry. Three, two, one. We will remember the great player that he was and the great man that he is, Gaylord Perry. This guy made me look good. What defines an athlete? Is it their speed? Their strength? Their heart? Go, 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 come on. For any athlete, the desire to compete does not dissipate when faced with challenges. Passionate intensity is a defining characteristic of the San Francisco wheelchair giants. Ball's live, here we go, here we go. Talking to Annie, she told me some of the stories of, of the men and women that are out here uh, today, but she also shared with me how dedicated that they are. One hour, one hour watching them play out here was just unbelievable. We are an MLB team. There are several recreational softball teams around the country too, but we were interested in forming an elite traveling team so that we could play at a high level. Based in Sacramento, the team is comprised of athletes from a variety of backgrounds. We have every range from new injured that have been just learning to really play the sport to we got Paralympic athletes. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Many would say they're super athletes because they have to overcome an additional physical challenge in order to play the same sport. Oh, that'll play. Nice, nice. In accordance with the National Wheelchair Softball Association's rules, the game is played on hard surfaces to allow for more fluid movement, and the use of a glove is optional. It is very difficult to play wheelchair softball with a mitt because you need to push at the same time and the size of the ball makes it easier to catch. It's a little bit, a little bit different in size than, the, uh, than a standard softball. In order to compose an elite team, the coaches found players not just with natural athleticism, but with the wheelchair skills necessary to be effective on the field. The skill handling of your chair is both speed and agility. Keep there, Joe! Technology on chairs has gotten better. They started out with pretty big, cumbersome, heavy chairs and made it into a lot lighter, a lot more maneuverable. You're athletes first, and you just find a way to make it work with, you know, the minor inconvenience of physical challenges. For these athletes, their involvement with sports made all the difference in helping them to conquer overwhelming circumstances. I was advanced with sports prior to disabilities, uh, went into service, and then uh, it really took me a while to get back on board to find myself and start living again. I got three kids, 
small kids, I have to still show that we cannot let a small thing like this stop us from living. You think your life is going to change so much, and you know, I'm not going to be able to do this, I'm not going to be able to do that. But um, getting back involved with sports just changed my life around. And I knew this was just an opportunity again for that competitiveness that I have and to challenge myself, challenge others was, was back. Stay closer to first so the timing is quicker. This group of people is just uh, real inspiring to play with. Hey, go, we got this, guys. Everyone draws off each other. You're helping, constantly helping, you're constantly learning. The love that you feel, even though a little trash talk and the joking around, but we're all, we're family. <laughs> It's a small community, and when you have people fighting for that community to make life better, it's just, it's very, very cool. Giants on three, ready? One, two, three, Giants! Being a part of a world-class organization is a testament to this team's supreme athleticism and unparalleled heart. You don't know how big that is to say, just to be affiliated with the Giants. It's validation of their desire and their right to travel nationally and internationally to play the sport of wheelchair softball that they love. Giants fans, tonight we are proud to introduce your new MLB San Francisco Giants wheelchair team. Every kid's dream to get out on the field. I almost feel like a big leaguer. You get that chance, you know, you made it to the big leagues. You know, I've been, you know, that, that average guy in the seat watching the, watching the game down there and wondering, you know, what it's like to, to kind of look up at, at, at the folks there, to be recognized out there. To say I'm a giant, you know, it's nothing better. We got a letter from a mom whose child has cancer. And she said, you know, it's just, it can be such a lonely feeling like you're battling by yourself. When I drive to the hospital, I see posters of Buster and it just reminds me that we're not alone. How are you? Can I get a high five? All right. Can I get a high five from you too? All right. What's your name, bud? Huh? Don't be shy. Buster Posey is a champion in many ways. An MVP with a gold glove, a silver slugger with three rings, and now a champion for the kids who need it most. All kids have dreams, and our patients are no exception. They all have dreams. Maybe their immediate dream is that they just want to get better, but they certainly have, you know, the long-term goal of wanting to do something great with their lives. How are you today? It's good to see you. A passionate team led by Buster and his wife, Kristen, is striving to bring these seemingly distant dreams within reach. Thank you, Sam. Good to meet you. You know, my goal is to cure all of childhood cancer. I think that with Buster and Kristen's help, we'll get that to that goal a little bit faster. <laughs> Go Giants! Hi, everybody. My name's Lee. Hi. <laughs> Once a month, Buster's pregame routine includes quality time shared between his family and the families of patients. If your nose runs and your feet smell, you're built upside down. <laughs> if your nose runs and your feet smell, you're built upside down. I like it. If we can take five minutes and maybe make a kid happier or possibly inspire a kid to, you know, be motivated to get back out on the baseball field or football, soccer, softball, tennis, whatever it is. That's where we're really lucky to, to be in a position to do that. Need a hand? Even in times of struggle, there are moments when the battle doesn't seem so lonely and dreams don't seem so far away. And this is where they play baseball. Are you going to play here one day? Uh, Wiggins family, their little boy is about the same age as our twins. And um, he was diagnosed with neuroblastoma. And just being in contact with that family and seeing the struggles that 
that he went through. Um, I think it inspired us to try to help out a little bit in any way that we could. They're just inherently much more uh, positive and resilient than adults are. I think they still have the, the innocence of life. It's pretty amazing just to see you know, how strong they are and the positive mindset that they have, and it's very admirable. Cannon, what's up, buddy? Can you say hi? Hi, Bob. Thanks for the meet. How are you? There is more to what you do on the field, and it's actually, you know, more important, you know, the, the life stuff. How are you doing, man? All right. Children should be at school with their friends. They should be having fun. They should be living the life that a child should live. We have to make people aware. We have to. A goal of, of mine and Kristen's is, is obviously to raise money and awareness, but it's also about, you know, forming a community. And it's about those parents and those kids feeling like, hey, somebody's out there you know, grinding for us right now. Vince Scully Bobblehead, 1990. John Miller, Vince John Miller. Miller. <laughs> I have all your albums. <laughs> game that I will do as my swan song is October the 2nd, 2016, with the Giants, which is exactly 80 years to the day from the day that I fell in love with that line score in baseball. So uh, <laughs> it's a ribbon on a package, and it looks like it's been ordained that that's the way I should call it in. As the 2016 season drew to a close, there were many moments to celebrate. Everybody that ever broadcasted this booth will know oh that this gosh. is your, your last broadcast was here. One other thing for you, Vinny. Oh knowing, knowing your love and 80 years ago, ago what happened, this is your hero, Mel Ott, and the game ticket from his 500th home run. He was my boyhood idol. Although you came close. <laughs> <laughs> well, you came way to What yeah, happened yeah. to me? Yeah. yeah, nothing happened to you. You just happened to be great. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Nice Thank you so much. While Vin Scully was concluding his prodigious career in the booth, On the field, the Giants swept their rivals, fighting their way into the postseason. For the fourth time in seven years, the Giants are headed towards a meaningful October. And let this celebration begin. Though the Giants' postseason run was abbreviated, it was not without its share of thrills and glory. Giants Mets with this big city buzzing about the National League wildcard game. Some postseason legends continued. The legend of Madison Bumgarner in October just seems to get bigger. Others were born anew. Even at the precipice of defeat, these legendary moments have the power to inspire joy and unity.
These are the moments that will live on forever in the memories of those who bore witness. Let's go Giants! Let's go Giants! Champion blood still runs throughout the Bay. Heard, I've heard some amazing stuff about you, man. Everyone compares me to you. They say I'm the Drake Lord. That's, that's why I asked for your jersey. No way. No that's way. Are you kidding me? Come here. Come here, dude. Give me a hug, bro. I saw you say one thing where you were like, your, your biggest fear is not winning again. Yeah. But like, that should never, that should never be a fear. Y'all are too good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, we're coming to get another one. I like him. Yeah. I like him a lot. As the Giants, their fans, and this city move forward onto the next chapter, we do so with a justified optimism and with the knowledge that the next defining breath is always just a moment away.